welcome to me who was selected in uber she plus plus and is also upcoming sw enter in uber so let's start with your introduction yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, as a partner said, I'm Purvi Sharasya and I'm a third year CSI student at ITT UW. Um, uh, as a way of introducing my achievements, I am a Google V scholar and I'm also a Google uh, generation scholar. Um, I backed the Uber C um, as well and I'm, I was an Uber star intern in my second year. After completing my internship, I got a re-intern offer at Uber and so I'll be interning as a SWE intern in the upcoming summer with Uber. Um, my interests also lie towards research and I'm working on a project in the sphere of natural language processing with a postdoc fellow from University of Pennsylvania. So yeah, I think that's my introduction. Congratulations, Purvi. So Thank you. Yeah, let's start this. First, we will cover the eligibility for Uber She++. Right. So uh, just introducing Uber She++. Uber She++ is a diversity and inclusion event, which is an initiative by Uber. And it's open to all sec to second year students in the field of BTEC. Um, there are certain branch specifications um, it's mostly, um, I think till EC, all branches, all computer science and engineering branches are uh, eligible for this uh, event. And um, in in my year, there wasn't a CGPA criteria as such, like uh, everyone was allowed to sit in the test. Maybe it could have been a factor in terms of choosing, but it was not an eligibility criteria. Um, Apart from that, I don't think so. There was any eligibility criteria. It was mostly that it was open to all second year engineering students. Uh, okay, Purvi. Next, coming to your DSC preparation, uh, like also in Uber C++, you had a o OA round. Na? So how you prepared DSA, when you started it, all about DSA. So actually, I was, uh, as I mentioned before, I was part of the Google V program. So. Um, though I was doing DSA on my own, they used to encourage us towards step preparation a lot. So I think I started with DSA prep in uh, September, October, and it wasn't a very consistent prep, but um, I was trying my best at it. Uh, I used to solve questions on lead code. Uh, I followed a few lists as well, but ultimately it was mostly I was selecting questions at random from topics that I thought I was weak at. Um, during during November also, I gave a lot of lead code contests so that I could see my time to practice towards these problems and um, practice the uh, the question practice those questions which I thought I was weak at. So I remember being extremely weak at graphs, um, graphs and DP, and I think I'm still weak at them. But I think consistent practice really improves how you approach a problem. So yeah, I think I started in September and I used to practice on lead code. And um, apart from that, we used to get assignments as well from V. So those helped a bit as well. And uh, it was definitely a big help that they kept us um, they kept us in track as to how are we performing in terms of lead code contests and everything. So yeah. Okay, Puri. Next, coming to resume wala part. Uh, how you made your resume? Uh, what are the tips from your side for the students to make resume? So uh, I think resume plays a very important role when it comes to Uber, She++ and STAR, uh, especially for STAR selection. Um, I made my resume in Overleaf and uh, the one most important thing that I've observed is um, try to make your resume on an, on an Overleaf and not a, a Canva uh, template because those don't look professional. Overleaf looks like a professional resume that uh, recruiters like to look at. Make sure that it's concise, all the information is present that you would like the recruiter to know about you. It's basically you on a piece of paper. So how would you like to uh, portray yourself like that? And everything that you're putting on the resume, make sure you know it in depth because uh, later on when you come to the interview part, if you do get selected, uh, the recruiter can ask you anything from the resume. They can ask you about the projects. They can ask you about experiences. They can cross check whether or not you have a certain self certification. So make sure not to lie in your resume. It's very, very important. Um, 
try to highlight all the skills that you have in terms of tech stacks that you have learned and languages that you know and the best way to do that is to make projects that highlight those skills so i have it around 3 to 4 projects so make sure you have at least that much amount of projects and the projects should be diverse in nature and it should accentuate what exactly you are you think that you're good at or what exactly you think your domain is and apart from that um i think in my case even positions of leadership was considered as an important point so uh if you are part of a club if you are leading any role in that make sure that it's highlighted in your resume as well um there could also be a section of important subjects that you have studied because some recruiters like to ask questions around them some students who got into c++ were asked questions around computer networks and operating systems or dbms stuff that you have studied don't worry it's not going to be uh, more than your syllabus but um, yeah that can be highlighted as well and if you have any work experience if you worked in a startup or worked as a freelance intern or even a part of college internships that happen uh, do mention that in your resume and whatever you learn from it it's very important to say that um, okay i worked to help for two months but uh, the experience that i gained from this made me a better coder or made me a better um, engineering student so yeah i think that's it okay purvi uh, next coming to the oa pattern in uber c++ yeah so the oa was uh, 90 minutes and it consisted of three questions the questions were increasing in difficulty the first being the easiest the second medium and i remember the third one was the hardest one uh, i solved two uh, two and a half out of three of them um the th- the first question was around stacks and queues as far as i can remember the second one was around graphs no i'm not sure it was maps with something else but it was an easy question medium level i would say lead code medium and the third one was also uh, the tricky part for the third one was that the brute force was not passing all the test cases i remember and i was trying to come up with a dp approach but it was still failing a lot of the test cases so make sure that you optimize your code but when you're approaching a problem the first and foremost thing is if you can't come up with an optimized solution make sure you try the brute, brute force one because in a lot of cases even the brute force solution gets accepted so um yeah the third one i tried to optimize but i wasn't able to get all the test cases to pass so it was around 2.5 to 2.75 out of 3 questions were answered by me okay purvi next coming to like after the oa what was your journey in uber c++ like you told uh, you have a event so yeah, yeah, yeah all about that we want to know okay sure so after i gave the oa i think it was around a week or two weeks later that we got the result initially after the oa we were asked to fill a form which said that uh, which confirmed with us if we think that we were getting above a 500 score and since i had solved 2.5 above it was around 500 or 5 a bit over 500 so i filled that form but and just as a disclaimer here a lot of people who were below that range as well also got into uber c++ so it wasn't a hard and fast rule according to me the criteria that they evaluated uber c++ was on your coding score obviously but apart from that um, the ty- the quality of the code that you've written and the complexity of your code that you've written that was also extremely important so i tried my best to submit the most optimized solution that i could come with come up with so try to optimize your time and space in, in every solution that you're submitting apart from that after uh, i got this selection mail um, it was about the uber c++ event so uber c++ was a two day event which is held in hyderabad so and everything was covered by uber right right from our airfare to our hotels to our food everything so it was a very very fun experience and uh, i i along with all the other uber c++ scholars we went to hyderabad and the, we went we stayed in an amazing hotel and after that we got the chance to visit the uber hyderabad office and uh, yeah i think it was my first time in a real office so i was extremely excited to see everyone working and the corporate atmosphere that existed there and once the event started it was a series of talks from the major engineering leaders at uber and a lot of other fun activities uh, ranging from ideathons to 
uh, I'm breaking breaking the ice sort of things. And we were the idea thon was I think the most interesting part of Uber Plus Plus event. So we were supposed to come up with ideas or solutions that can make the Uber app a better app. Essentially, what new feature can we introduce into the app that would make it that would make it even more uh, versatile than it is right now? So, the team that won had a had an inter, had a person from IGD2 as well. My team unfortunately did not win, but it was extremely fun to think of solutions with such bright people. So. And this was a, um, I forgot to mention this in eligibility, Uber Ship Pluses only comes to selected campuses. So our campus was one of the 15 campuses to which Uber Ship Plus Plus comes. And most of the students that were selected for Uber, Uber Ship Plus Plus were from uh, extremely good colleges. So it was daunting at first, but then I realized that, you know, I'm getting a chance to learn with so, such bright people around me. And after that, um, it was just networking. Uh, a lot of us were assigned mentors from Uber. So I could talk to a person. Uh, I was assigned a recent joining at Uber, and she was going to work at Uber California, but she was interning at Uber Hyderabad. So I was talking to her about her journey and any questions that I had about my own journey, what would be the best path for me. And I got a lot of useful insights from her as well. So yeah, I think that's it. Okay, Purvi, next coming to like how you received a pre-placement internship, like PPI part. How was your interview at that time? And what was your interview in your interview? Like you told, you also have a resume now, right? So yeah, yeah. we want to know like how Uber C++ gets converted into your internship, SW internship. Okay, so it's not the second year internship is actually Uber Star. So, and the third year internship is this V1. So the, I had to interview for the star internship. So all these students that were sele selected for Uber C++ were automatically eligible for the Uber star interview process. And in the interview process, we were required to submit our resumes. And uh, the call was for everyone. It wasn't that there was an initial shorting based on your resume also. It wasn't, everyone was interviewed. Uh, my interview was, definitely based just on my resume and it ranged from the projects that I've built and the ex work ex that I've had. So I was also co contributing to outreach at that point. So I mentioned that as well in my resume. So a lot of it was about my contributions to open source and the package that I was contributing to. How, how did I feel about open source in general and how did I construct PRs and what issues did I solve? And then secondly, I had also worked a bit in natural language processing earlier as well. So some questions were around that. Why did I choose natural language processing? A project that I've made on natural language processing, they have they asked me to explain it in detail about what it does, how it functions. And um, I had also co-founded a data science club in our university, which is called The Arc. So um, the second half of the interview was completely about my experiences in leadership. Uh, how did I come up with an idea? Why did I think that I need a data science club in my university? And uh, what happens if there's conflict in the club? How do I handle that? And how did I construct a team of like-minded individuals? So it was a lot about my experiences in leadership. And um, a little bit was about my other projects as well. So there was one project about Spotify and uh, so, um, the questions were around why, what inspired me to make that project and a little bit in-depth questions about the API calls that were happening in that as well, because it was a full stack project. So uh, a lot of APIs were being used. So it was about that as well. Yeah. Mm, okay, Purvi, uh, last thing I would like to ask from you is do's and don'ts you would suggest to the juniors like who are going to give this Uber C++ and who are the future interns? So um, I think the first and foremost one would be don't target a company, target the experience that you're going for. Uber is also just a company, just like any other company that comes on our campus. And we are fortunate enough to be on a campus that harbors such a nice and amazing diverse amount of companies. Right. So don't target a company. It becomes extremely uh, stressful because I think I was initially doing it for step. And I, then I uh, I did sit in the interview rounds for step, but I did not get step. So I was extremely dis dis disappointed about that. So but just from personal experience, targeting a company ha never helps anyone. So don't target a company. Secondly, um, it's very important to you can't just solve problems for the sake of getting a job. 
okay see see when you are trying to solve a problem think of it in a more creative manner that okay maybe if this was happening in a real life scenario how would that solve it try to in try to make yourself interested in problem solving then only you would be able to get consistent in it so and i recently found a source for prob the cscs problem set and it has some amazing and very interesting problems so if any of you are uh, want to become better at problem solving i would suggest that you start with the cscs problem set and then shift to lead code of course lead code is more suitable for interview preparations but cscs provides a more comprehensive look towards problem solving and thirdly don't lie on your resume very important uh, construct your resume in a way that tells a story about you so and lying about your personality your achievements is not going to be very well because uh, the recruiters are very very sharp about noticing these things even in your interview if you do get to the interview round be as honest as possible if you don't know the answer of a certain question just say outright that you are not sure about this and you would li like to read about this later because it happened with a lot of people that they said a lot of fancy words that they weren't sure of and then um, the recruiter kept asking more detailed questions about them and they weren't able to answer so tip and he words just stick to what you know be simple and be precise that's very important yeah i think that's all from my end <laughs>